Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and there's been a growing trend, well, a full-blown sensation of people customizing their iPhone's home screens with widgets and custom icons. Now, there's a lot of guides out there already, and I'm sure they're going to be more aesthetic than what I'm going to show you today, but I am going to give you a thorough step-by-step -step guide on how to get these custom icons and some of these more colorful widgets. And don't worry if you've already seen one of these customization videos, because that's not the only topic I'm covering in today's video. After I show you how to customize your home screen, I'm also going to to give you some more advanced tips and tricks towards the end of this video, including sound recognition, headphone adjustments, hiding photos, and more. And you guys seem to like the last tips and tricks video, so you should like this one too. So let's get started with showing you how to better customize your home screen. Okay, so if you watch my last iOS 14 tips and tricks video, you know all about the new widgets feature on iOS 14. This is the first time that iOS has allowed widgets. And what you're probably seeing floating around social media are these more colorful, detailed oriented widgets. The way that people are doing this is actually through an app. Uh, there's a couple of them out there, the most popular one being an app called Called Widgetsmith. So if you go over to the App Store and if you search for Widgetsmith, it should be the top result right there. I already downloaded it and we're going to just open that up. And you can see I already set up some custom widgets right here. You can obviously do them in all the size classes. So small, medium, or large widgets. Let's go ahead and do a new uh, medium widget. So we're going to hit add widget. You're going to see that it popped up a new setting that automatically defaults to medium three. You're going to click on that and now you can click over here and you'll actually be able to customize this. So the customization here, they're honestly pretty simple things, right? You have things like the time, date, uh, you can do custom with photos, you can do calendar, you can do reminders. Weather is kind of locked behind a paywall, but you can pay for that health and activity, all these different widgets that you can kind of customize. And this is probably what you're seeing on a lot of people's home screens right now. Now, what a lot of people are actually choosing to do is a custom text. So if you go over here, you can write something and have it displayed there. So let's put something cool. Okay, now you can see you have all these different options, right? You can select the font. Um, we can go with San Francisco mono. I think that would look pretty cool and then you can go ahead and change your color, right? You can change like different things. So why don't we do a orange and then you can do your background color as well. So you can go over here and select all these different kind of background colors. I think blue maybe might look good on this. Probably not, but yeah, let's do pastel blue and that's it. So now you have your widget all customized. You hit save and now to add this widget to your home screen, you actually have to back out of here. You're going to scroll over to a new page or, or wherever you want to put this widget. Long press on here, of course, press the top left plus button. You can also scroll down all the way to the bottom and hit widget Smith. From here, you can see your different size classes, small, medium, and large. I just put a small one right there. You can see we already have a custom iOS 14 widget I made earlier. We're gonna do another one. Let's go ahead and do the medium one for the text. And it already defaulted to our iOS 14 tips and tricks. Apparently the tricks part got cut off, but if you ever want to customize these, what you do is you long press on these widgets, you hit edit widget, and then you can select between all the different widgets that you've already made. So you can see we made three of them here. If I go to the one, that'll display the original widget there. If I go to this smaller widget over here, do the same thing, hit edit widget. You can see that we have all of our different options. We can put Steve Jobs right on our home screen, right where he belongs. And of course, you're probably interested in these photo ones, right? So let's do a small one this time. Let's go ahead, go over and hit here. And then again, we get all these different customization options. Now we're gonna go on and hit photo. And now all we have to do is hit selected photo. We go to choose our photo and you can see we have all these default photos loaded up here. And we could just go ahead, we'll just pick the messages icon for now. And that's it. Now all of a sudden you have another photo widget to display on your home screen. Obviously you can choose something a little more visually aesthetic or maybe a photo of your pets or your kids or something cool like that. Scroll all the way at the bottom for widget Smith. Click on that again, add the small widget. Now you'll see this time it didn't default to the last thing we customized. So to change that, long press again, hit edit widget. 
And I think it was the last one, small six. You can change those names too, by the way. And you can see we have that photo displayed there. Now, if you're a keen eye observer of this video, you probably noticed I had some custom icons that are actually not available on iOS 14. And you might have also seen that floating around with people customizing their home screens. Well, let me show you how to do that now. So to do that, you're gonna need an app called Shortcuts. I believe it comes pre-installed on iOS 14. Once you have the Shortcuts app, you're just gonna go into Shortcuts. Then you're gonna hit the plus button to add a new shortcut. Now, shortcuts is really advanced. You can do a ton of scripting and ton of automation, but what we're doing is super simple. So you're gonna add that, you're gonna hit scripting, and all you have to do is hit open app. That's it. Now, you're gonna go to choose your app. So why don't we do a app store? We're gonna do the app store app icon. And from there, you're gonna hit these three little dots in the top right corner. And then you can see that you have the shortcut name, we're just gonna name it App Store 2. Then you're gonna hit Add to Home Screen. So right now you can see there's no custom icons. To add the custom icon, you have to tap this right here. Now you can take a photo, choose a photo, and we're gonna do Choose Photo. Now you can see I have all these different icons over here. I'm gonna choose the App Store icon. This is from iOS 6. We're gonna zoom in a little bit because it kinda, you have to make sure it crops in correctly. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect for our purposes here. But you can see, we just made a custom App Store icon, and then we can name this App Store. Then you just hit Add, and it adds it to the home screen. So when you back out of here, you can see that we have a custom App Store icon from iOS 6. Now, when you press on this, it's gonna take us to the App Store. It's gonna take us right into the App Store after it goes to the Shortcuts app. So even though you can customize your icons like this, you really have to want these different styles and you really have to want to show off your personality because it is a little bit inconvenient. Because every time you press that, it goes into shortcuts first to run the script and then it brings you into your app of choice. So let's do that one more time. You go to shortcuts, you go to plus, add action, scripting, open app, choose an app. This time let's do uh, YouTube. You're on YouTube, why not do YouTube? Press those three dots again. You can rename the shortcut. I believe I already made one of these, so we'll call it YouTube 2. Hit add to home screen. Again, press this here to actually choose the icon, choose the photo, and let's go ahead and choose the old YouTube app. It used to look like a tube TV, believe it or not. We're gonna zoom in a little bit to crop this correctly. Hit choose, and now we can name this YouTube. Hit add, and you're done. Now you can see that we have the YouTube app icon right here and that's it. You go over, you hit YouTube, it's gonna run the script and it's gonna take me to my YouTube page. So obviously I'm not gonna go through the whole video customizing everything. That would be like an hour long video. This can take quite a while, but I did already make a full kind of iOS 6 styled page. If we just go over here and go into my hidden pages, you can select that, hit done. And now if we scroll over, you'll see my old style iOS 6 icons. Again, you don't have to use iOS 6 icons. You can use whatever kind of photos you want to customize your app icons. This is just the style that I chose. Now we have the full iOS 6 effect on our most recent iPhone running iOS 14. And if you scroll back, you can kind of see the different style, the more flat style of modern design versus the more skeomorphic design that we used to have back in the day. Okay, and that's it. And now that you know how to make the most aesthetic home screen ever, let's turn our attention to some more useful tips and tricks. One of the more advanced features you might want to enable on your iPhone is something called sound detection. Now, sound detection is an accessibility feature that will allow your iPhone to listen for sounds like fire alarms, sirens, water running, a baby crying, or even your cat or dog. And when your iPhone hears one of these sounds, it will send you a notification. To enable this, go to settings, go to accessibility, Scroll down to hearing and tap on sound recognition. In here, enable sound recognition, then tap on sounds and you can see a full toggle of all the different sounds that you can be alerted to if your iPhone hears them. Now, obviously this feature is meant for those with trouble hearing or those in the deaf community. However, I feel like everyone can take advantage of this feature, especially if you leave your iPhone in the other room and you also own an Apple Watch. That's because when the iPhone detects a sound, it also sends a notification to your Apple Watch. So when your iPhone's in the other room and it hears someone knocking on the door, it's nice to be alerted and get that notification. Speaking of which, while you're in the accessibility settings page, 
you may want to check out another section under hearing called audio slash visual. In this area, you will be able to turn on a setting called headphone accommodations. From here, you can customize audio for your AirPods or Beats branded earbuds and headphones and set different settings for balanced tone, vocal range, brightness, as well as adjust other frequencies and if you want, this can be applied to just your phone or media. Furthermore, you can do a full custom audio setup where you can do a five minute test picking out different sound samples that sound better to your ears. Everyone kind of has different hearing. And overall, this is a nice little way to get a extra boost in sound quality out of your AirPods. Another helpful tip is for when you're navigating all these setting pages that I'm showing you in this video, you might get a little confused where you are in iOS in the user menu. Well, now there's actually a quick way to move back and forth between these settings. All you have to do is long press on the back button in the top left corner and you will get a full list of menus you went through. This also works in other applications as well that have a back button in the top left corner and long pressing will bring up a history of the menu settings for you to quickly jump between sections. Another trick I want to bring up is actually one from my previous video where I didn't cover another thing you could do with the picture in picture window. So now iOS 14 supports picture in picture video in supported apps and all you have to do is press on the picture in picture button or swipe up to enable it just like I showed you in my last iOS 14 video. However, one detail I left out is that you can actually drag a picture in picture video all the way over to the side to hide it from view. You might wanna use this trick if you're using a video player app just to listen to something. I find this really helpful when I wanna to listen to certain music on YouTube without actually watching a video. And again, if you wanna use YouTube in picture in picture, don't use the YouTube app, just go to the website in Safari and picture in picture is fully supported there. Okay, here's some helpful camera tricks to learn for quickly taking photos and videos. First of all, this isn't a new feature in iOS 14, but it's one you might have forgot about, and that is to long press on the camera shutter to start recording a video. From there, you can either drag it to the right to lock that video, or release your finger from the shutter button to stop recording the video. As always, you can also press the volume button to take a photo as well once you're in the camera app. However, now in iOS 14, you can hold the volume buttons to start taking a quick video, and if you go into settings, go to camera, you'll see that there is a new settings to set the volume up button for burst photos. Now you can map it to whenever you press volume up, you can have it take a burst photo shot for capturing fast moving action and have the volume down button mapped to quickly record video. Speaking of photos, you can now add captions to them in iOS 14. To do this, select the photo and scroll down and right there you will see the new caption area. And then you can type whatever you want, which is helpful for remembering details about trips, important information about something like a receipt or just other helpful or useful information that you wanna remember about this photo. And when you're out there taking those pictures or you have a receipt or another sensitive photo that you just wanna hide from public viewing, you might wanna add it to a hidden album. And if you want to be super secretive about these photos, then you're going to want to hide that hidden album from your photo library by going to settings, scrolling down to photos, and then toggling the hidden album off which will then completely hide the option to select that hidden album from your photo library. So that is the ultimate way to be super secretive about the photos you store on your device. What, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? All right, everyone, and that does it for my more advanced iOS 14 tips and tricks, and as well as how to customize your home screen Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including maybe some future iOS tips and tricks or some other tips and tricks videos, make sure you subscribe. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.